here is the Battlefield 5 ray tracing demo for a bit ago. Look how good those eyes look. Now let's pan over. Ah, oh, look how beautiful those rays look. And let's stop right there. Look at that beautiful 2008 fire graphics right there. Look at that. It's like it's straight out of a U pixelated YouTube video from before the PS4 even came out. Oh, wow. Ray tracing's great, guys. Because that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make all of these effects look like garbage. So that this little reflection here looks 10% better, perceptively. Let's look at what Vega can do. I actually think that looks really cool. There's some lag there, though. Yeah. I think that looks significantly cooler than the tank, but notice how there's no people walking around. Hmm. Wonder if they could without plummeting frame rates. What's this I'm sneaking in over here? Well, the resolution isn't the greatest, but the ray tracing is pretty good. Look at all these reflections at the same time. Yeah, this is being run on an old smartphone. Yeah, wow, right? How about this? This is from 2007. This is the PS3 cell processor. It's off screen, so it looks like junk. And it's in like a really low resolution. But there they are. Ray tracing a full car in 2007. Wait, hashtag PS3 stronger than the 2080 Ti? All right, let's get to the video. You know, it's going to be ray tracing, smoke and mirrors, or true innovation. But I don't think I need to. I did enough research in a small amount of time that I've come to my conclusion early. And that conclusion is to not be surprised about anything with ray tracing and to also not be impressed. Let me explain. What I showed you in the beginning was that Battlefield demo, right? Where we saw this great reflection in eyes, right? Which they can actually fake in rasterization anyways with a less of a performance hit. And, and, and to anyone who says the ray tracing would look better. Oh, will it look better? You're going to walk up to that guy trying to shoot you in Battlefield 5 and like look, like you look in his eyes for a long enough time to tell the difference? Because you're not. It's perceptively no different than a lot of the stuff you can do with rasterization. Yeah, the reflections on the hoods of the cars looks a little better, but it doesn't even really look that real, right? It's like you're running through this war-torn world and you see all of these, like, fresh off-the-line factory cars. It distracts from the realism just as much as if it wasn't ray traced. It is not more realistic. There would be dust on the car. It wouldn't reflect as well. And that's what the rasterized cars already look like. There's already some lighting reflections. And they actually look more realistic than the ray trace reflection. Metro Exodus, I want your game running at 8K, not... <laughs> All it did is make the rooms darker. That's... And, uh, and, and, and not more realistically dark. There were still not enough life sources. Ray tracing right now, hybrid ray tracing doesn't make it look better. It just makes it look different. And I'm sick of this. And to get to those ray trace reflections, that fire looks like junk. It just looks like complete ass. And the textures could be higher. And we could be running at higher frame rates and resolutions. But instead, I guess we'll just run in 1080p 60 hertz and have unrealistically clean cars around us that you can't even drive. You know, good use of resources. And that's the point of my video. And then we get to that Vega video, which was, I think, more impressive because it's running as far as I could find by researching. It was running 4K 30 hertz. Not 60, but this isn't Radeon 7. This is Vega 56. It's a $300 graphics card from a year and a half ago that is running ray tracing in 4K at frame rates that aren't complete garbage in the 2070 that costs almost twice as much, well, more like 50% more, certainly cannot claim doing any of that in any games with ray tracing. And then we got to a smartphone running ray tracing fine. Yes, the resolution, the polygon count wasn't great, but the, the part that was ray traced, it was reflecting off of like 20 mirrors at once. It actually used more light sources than Battlefield 5 does while you're ray tracing. And that's because they spent the time to come up with the correct algorithm to run it on the smartphone. Now, it's going to drain your phone battery in like, you know, like an hour and most games won't use it. But that's the point I'm making here is, is that what you want to do when you play smartphone games? Drain the battery in one hour? Is it worth 
having those reflections that don't look any better while you're playing the game. And the same goes for PS3. The PS3 had cell processor with a main core and actually almost close to beefed up stream processors that could do different things. And there was one of the processors for lighting and they actually had multiple demos of real time ray tracing, but even Killzone decided to not go with it because it killed performance. It was just wasn't worth it. It's never been worth it. And we've been able to do it for a long time and we can do it now. And so I guess the point of this video is I think more things than you think can run ray tracing from what I can tell. It's and, and what and to be honest, and this isn't me guessing, from what I have read and I have done some research, processors will be able to ray trace significantly better than graphics cards in terms of efficiency, assuming you have enough cores. Which before now we didn't, but Ryzen has made it I mean, we have a lot of we have extra cores. And I think within six months you're gonna be able to get eight core CPUs for two hundred bucks. And you'll be able to get 12 cores for like three to 400. You know, this is going to get to the point where games are already running fine on quad cores with eight threads. So what if we take, you know, like let's take that $200 or $250 uh, R5 3600X that's about to come out. For the game, you really only need eight of those 16 threads. For the other eight, you could, if you have the extra threads, you could run ray tracing on that. And I'm pretty sure it will run better. That's why that smartphone demo runs so well is because a lot of smartphones have eight cores now and they're just running the ray tracing off like six of the eight cores. Those smartphone games do not need a lot of processing power. So they take the extra cores and well, ray tracing works. It's the same with the PS3. The PS3 could do ray tracing, but it still wasn't even worth it for the PS3. But it could because its processor was overpowered for the time. So with extra processing power in the CPU, we'll be able to do it. And that is probably what the future of ray tracing is. The future probably is people with thread rippers ray tracing twice as good as an RTX card at higher frame rates. And the best part is you won't have to sacrifice 4K. You won't have to sacrifice 144 hertz. That's the future of ray tracing. Until we have real like photorealistic textures, until we have photorealistic polygon counts, until we have photorealistic... Um, Physics is almost there, but there's still problems. Until we have photorealistic um, animations, there's no point. We have much bigger fish to fry. Get the textures down. Get the animations down. Get the polygon counts down. And let us run it at 8K. Then we can worry about ray tracing. But until then, I won't be surprised if anything can run ray tracing at 30 hertz or 60 hertz at any resolution because apparently the ps3 could it just never was worth it thank you everyone like subscribe share that's my opinions on ray tracing